There's a lot to be desired when it comes to video conferencing. And there's so much more that we could be doing when it comes to having virtual meetings. And that's really ultimately the promise of what's called telepresence. This is a term that was coined back in the 1980s by an important computer scientist named Marvin Minsky. Essentially, telepresence gives the effect of being at a place other than your own location. So imagine that you could present yourself as some sort of hologram where you enter a real physical space somewhere else in the world and feel as though you're there and people who are at that real place perceive you as being there or at least perceive your hologram as being there and can interact with you as you would in a real physical meeting. That is the end game of telepresence. It ultimately gives you the effect of being at a place other than your true location. The key thing that classifies telepresence as an experience is that the user is virtually interacting with a live real place. Virtual reality or VR is different than this because the user is being given an artificial environment to quote unquote enter. And it's also different than augmented reality or AR where the user is given the illusion of content being added to the physical space immediately surrounding them. You can think of telepresence as replicated reality. Let me explain it to you in terms of movies. All right, so for virtual reality, think Ready Player One, where a user is entering the Oasis. For augmented reality, think of Minority Report, where Tom Cruise is playing with that interface in the air. That's augmented reality. And for telepresence, think Avatar, where he's jumping in this chamber and physically controlling a real-life body. Telepresence as an idea has been around for a while. And one of the first real telepresence systems was way back in 1992. I mean, this is before Windows 95 was even out. It was the Virtual Fixtures platform developed at the U.S. Air Force's Armstrong Labs. The system included a stereoscopic image display from the remote environment, as well as immersive touch feedback using a full upper body exoskeleton. That's one way of doing it, and the thing is, there's many different ways you can do it. And it really just comes down to the, the standard you're willing to accept when it comes to using this technology. I mean, when you get right down to it, technically a telephone provides telepresence because you can talk to someone in a remote location as if they were in the same room. Even a telegraph, in a way, is telepresence. But, I mean, we got to have a standard somewhere. These days... A Zoom call passes for telepresence, but I, I think you at least need your entire field of view taken up by uh, visual cues from the remote location. And ideally with the visual content being rendered based on your head movement. Think about uh, Paul McCartney doing a concert. He did a concert a few years back where he had a 360 camera on stage and users could throw on a VR headset at home and look around as if they were on stage at the concert. That was really a one-way example, though, because Paul McCartney could not see the user or in any way be affected by the user. He, he was just seeing a 360 camera. True telepresence consists of many pieces of information coming from you yourself, including your movements, actions, your voice, etc. It's all being transmitted and duplicated at the remote location. So many different ways of doing this. You could have a robot replicating movements. There's also a concept known as haptic teleoperation, where you could quote-unquote feel some approximation of the texture, weight, or size of some remote object. And I think that is super cool. I mean, just think about doing this on a different planet where you could be here on Earth 
picking up a rock on Mars and feeling it. And there's so many different uses of this technology. Uh, mining, bomb disposal, rescue missions, deep sea exploration, even hostage situations. A big one is remote surgery. Think about a soldier who's wounded on the battlefield being able to get assistance from the best surgeon in the world remotely. And I'm not talking about you prop up a laptop and you have a Zoom call with them. No, I'm talking about the, the surgeon is actually controlling some sort of robot that is mimicking his movements. Anyway, we have a long way to go with this technology. And I can't wait till you'll be able to join other holograms in some kind of hologram meeting. Because I think it'll be so cool. And I think this is actually the fundamental idea of what Facebook, or sorry, what Meta calls the Metaverse. The ability to connect to others virtually in a very immersive way, I think is actually a good idea. And so to Mark Zuckerberg, I say, good luck. Thanks for watching this video today. If you want to learn more about topics like these feel free to subscribe and I will see you next time.